Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome. Uh, my name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Heart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And you can find more information about the projects that I create or um, events that I have going on, things like that, at my blog, which is called stampingwithheart.blogspot.com. And I will um, have the website link right down here so that you can take a look at that. Okay, so um, we are going to be talking about simple card projects today. These are cards that focus on our favorite designer series paper packs or on new designer series paper packs. Um, this is a brand new upcoming designer series paper pack. This one is called bright and beautiful. Uh, you may have been seeing some fun projects being created with them. This was my first time working with this paper. Um, so that was really a lot of fun because we're going to focus on new colors too. Um, these have a lot of the colors in them from the color refresh or the new or returning colors that are coming back into the Stampin' Up! color collections. Um, and we've been talking about that as we've been leading up to our new catalog, which is going to launch on May 2nd, um, 2023. So before we fully dive into making the cards, um, be sure to say hi, whether you're watching live or in the replay, I I um, love to interact or get a chance to talk to you, um, hear your thoughts or tips or ideas. Um, I'm, you know, I just, I, I just love your feedback. So um, be sure to leave a comment. Let me know um, where are you watching from? Are you guys having good weather today? So we are going to talk for just a minute about my upcoming paper share, and then I'm going to point the camera down and we will start working on these cards. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about colors today too. So let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk about um, the paper share that I am going to be doing for our new annual catalog. Um, so let's see if I can do a share on this. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully you guys can see that now. All right, so um, this is something that I started doing last year. My friend Roberta, um, she's also a demonstrator, Roberta Timmons. She was showing me how to do paper shares and they have been so much fun. I have absolutely been loved doing these shares. So I am going to do one for our new upcoming catalog. So our 2023-2024 annual catalog has some really fabulous designer series paper packs in it. And so this is a way to affordably get all of the samples of the designer series papers from the new catalog um, in a six by six size, you would get a quarter pack. So essentially it's a sampler of each one of the designer series paper packs. And then you can do whatever you want with those or as you're getting to see those in person, um, it really makes such a difference when you can get that paper in your hands and see it with your own eyes. And then that is usually how many people decide, okay, I'm gonna need a full pack of that or I'm gonna need multiple packs of that or if you just want to have a little bit of everything, this is something that could cover occasions for an entire year, essentially, because our catalog runs for a year. Lots of different themes, colors, patterns, so much fun. So I'm going to show you a, a, a couple of the designer series paper packs today that I happen to have here with me, um, but it's not going to be all the papers. So here is what you would get in the paper share. And before um, I get into all the details, I want to say I'm going to be opening registration for my paper share tomorrow. So I will open registration for my paper share and I will be opening registration for my in color club tomorrow. So if you aren't already on my email list, please, please get on my email list because that is the first place that I announce these things so that you could get access to all of the information and decide which you would want to register for. 
But here is what you're going to get um, if you sign up for my paper share. The paper share registration will be open from April 26, 2023 until May 1st. Then I will close that out so that I can get the order in on May 2nd and then start working on, once I get the product here, cutting everything, packaging everything, getting the class ready um, for the people who are going to opt into the class as well, and then getting it shipped out to all of you. This is one of my favorite things to do in terms of an event. Um, and if you've ever participated in a paper share, shout it out in the comments and let me know. But here's what you're going to get. Um, you would get 13 designer series papers in a quarter pack size, six by six size. Okay. And then um, there is an add-on class available where you could get four card kits where the cards are pre-cut pre-scored, all of the pieces, the die cut pieces and things would be in that um, pack with your card kit. You would get an exclusive PDF with instructions, measurements, just like you guys often see, like with my project sheets. Um, and then you would also get an exclusive pre-recorded video class that you could watch at your convenience. And the whole theme of the class is different ways to use your designer series paper just like we're going to be talking about in today's live. Okay. So um, we talked about registration and all of that lovely stuff. So um, these, I will give you the list of the papers. So if you are interested in doing the paper share only option, that means you would be getting 13 quarter packs, six by six size of the papers that are listed below only the share it's $60. And that includes shipping. If you're interested in doing the add-on class, you could do the paper share plus the class and card kits. That will be $85, and that $85, and that includes shipping, okay? So um, if you want the add-on, the details will be on the registration right here. So these are the packs that you would be getting um, in the share, and I'm not going to name them all down. I'm going to show you four of the paper packs um, when we go down to the table here, and we're going to specifically be working with Bright and Beautiful today. But these are the packs that would be including um, it, that would be included in the paper share rather. And that is also going to include the in color DSP pack. OK, um, this will not include specialty papers. OK, so that would be a separate thing. These are our regular designer series paper packs in the catalog. Um, if you're interested in the specialty papers, that will not be part of this share. And they have gorgeous specialty papers in there that could coordinate with this paper share pack, just depending on what you would be doing. OK, so um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share now. But if you have any questions about registering for a paper share, like I said, I tomorrow so I can email you that link and then you can go ahead and register when I open up the event and then registration will stay open until May 1st. I will close it on May 1st. I will place the order on May 2nd and then once the product gets shipped to me, I cut everything up, prepare everything, design and get the class ready to go and then get everything shipped out to you. So if you have questions, please let me know. But just another shout out, if you're not on my email list to get on my email list, because that's the first place that all of this will get announced um, tomorrow morning. Okay, so I'm going to stop that share. Okay, and then um, let me, oh, hi, Kathy, how are you? I'm starting to see comments now. All right, so what I can do is um, I'm going to point down at the table now. We are going to be making these cards, so I'll show these to you, but let me show you the designer series papers that I do have here um, if you're interested in taking a look at what some of these designer series paper packs have. So let's go over here. I'm going to take this little banner down. I'm getting better with this getting better at it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, these are very simple cards. And the whole point of the cards that were created here were to show off the designer series paper. These are quick, simple cards um, that anybody can make using their favorite designer series paper packs. And like I'm saying, this is going to be um, part of the bright and beautiful designer series paper, which is so cheerful and bright. There's an entire suite in the catalog. 
that goes along with these papers. Um, I don't have the full suite yet. I just have this um, designer series paper. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for today, of course, because we're also talking about a paper share. And then we'll be talking about um, all of the products that we're going to use to make these cards as well. But um, here are, and you can see, I've really had a lot of fun with my bright and beautiful designer series paper. Here are the full pieces that are left, but we have these great colors and patterns here. Um, this is exactly what a six by six pack looks like. Uh, you can see that we have this beautiful ombre effect in most of the new colors here um, in this particular paper pack. I love, love, love the patterns that they've chosen. They are so mix and matchable, which is one of the nicest things in Pretty Peacock, which is what color this is. That was one of my favorite colors. I am so happy to see it back again. Um, and let me know in the comments if there are any particular colors that you're so happy to see back. Now, here are some of these leftover pieces that I had. This is Lost Lagoon right here. And then we have these patterns. So just imagine at one point that these were six by six. Um, there's Bubble Bath right there. That's a brand new color that's coming in. All right, so you can just start to get a feel of what these patterns and designs are with this designer series paper. And I mean, when I tell you mix and matchable, like I think this is going to be one of those that people are going to order multiple packs of and just have on hand to use throughout the year because it could be used for so many different occasions. This is going to be, I believe, one of our most versatile and popular designer series paper packs because it so beautifully shows a lot of those new colors. So that is bright and beautiful. Now here's another one that I have to show you. This one is called Zoo Crew, all right? So for those of you out there like me, um, who have kids, like I, I have a little boy, he's seven, um, but whether you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, cousins, um, this I think is going to be very, very popular um, with card themes that we're going to be making for them. And I can see that my internet, um, I don't know why noon is such a difficult time, or I should say, what time is it right now? 1230. Um, for my Wi-Fi, but it seems to be grumpy around this time of day. But is this not the cutest paper? I mean, look at these little characters here. So you can see we have a black and white theme with pops of color again, but all of these characters could actually be colored into whatever, you know, design you would want to do. So if this is something where your kids or your grandkids actually like to sit down and craft with you, but maybe they're not doing the same thing, you know, maybe you're making cards and they just want to do some coloring. This would be a great pack to consider for them. But also um, we can have difficulty sometimes coming up with different themes and ideas for different ages or, you know, um, kids, just depending on who's in our family. So I think Zoo Crew could be really great for that. All right. Now, another pack that I want to show you, just in case you haven't already seen it. I almost worked with this one today. Um, instead of bright and beautiful, but I really wanted to get into those new colors. Now there are new colors in this pack too, but let me just show you what these designer series papers are going to look like. So um, for those of you who like these certain um, blue willow or china patterns, it's like the one thing I cannot get out of my head when I see it. I think of my aunt every time I see this because she collects blue willow. Um, and I think I'm going to be able to make a really fabulous card set for her. And a lot of times when we're doing a DSP focus, um, card sets come to mind because we can sit down with a whole pack of paper and make a whole set of cards. Sorry, that's upside down. We can see our little bunny rabbit here. All right. So this is called um, Countryside countryside DSP or Countryside Floral. I have to um, look at the back of the... It's coming, it's coming up here. We'll see it in just a second. But I happen to really love all of these back patterns that are going to coordinate so beautifully with the front patterns, right? So just in that same exact layout for our designer series paper cards, um, we're going to do that with these as well. I love, 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 love this one. Oh my gosh, this one is so nice. Um, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. So, and you will too. 
So if you're thinking, okay, I would really like to try that paper. I'm not sure if I want a full pack of it. That's exactly what a paper share is the benefit for, right? Like that's one of the biggest perks because you can just get a quarter pack of it, six by six size. You can take it out for a spin, make a couple of cards, maybe, you know, just like I'm thinking of for my aunt that I know collects Blue Willow and who would really appreciate this theme, but maybe I don't need a full 12 by 12 pack of it, right? That's where the benefit of the paper share comes in. All right. And so we have this one too. I am so sorry about my internet being slow right now. I hope you guys can still hear me. Okay. Um, so in here, I'll give you the official name of this one. <clears throat> Every time I'm showing you guys paper, it's upside down. Oh, Countryside Inn. That's the one. It, it never sticks out in my mind. Countryside Inn. That is what this is a paper pack for. So I would cut this paper pack into fours. Um, and then I would pack these up and that would become our paper share. So I'm going to set this one off to the side here. We're not working with that one today, but I do think that's going to be my next live. So sneak peek for anybody who's showing up. Now this one I have worked with already and I have done cards with, with all of you. Um, it just fell over. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. We'll get there. Okay. Um, this is the daisy paper, the fresh as a daisy paper. Um, the reason that I have this sitting here is because the daisy paper utilizes all of the new in colors. Um, so the daisy paper and the daisy um, sweet is actually going to be the focus for my in color club um, for the first month for May. But we're not going to focus on the daisy so much as we are in the paper right now, just so that you can get an idea for the paper if you happen to not have seen it yet. Uh, so let me just set this off to the side here. And I kind of scooted this paper out of the way. Now, for those of you who like to do projects, hi, Joan, how are you doing? You're loving the new colors? That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to talk about new colors today. Um, so here again, I've already kind of dug into this paper. This is Moody Mauve. Um, but you can see we have lots of different fun daisy patterns with this DSP. And again, um, you might be somebody like me who really loves daisies and thinks that they're adorable and cheerful. Or you may think to yourself, you know what? I'm just not sure. I just don't know if I would use a lot of the daisies. A quarter pack of this in a six by six size would be a great way to take it for a spin and see if that's something that you would want to commit to getting a full pack of. Um, that's one of the reasons why doing a paper share is so great. Getting a class is great. Um, but yeah, I mean, really a lot of fun. So here is another one of those designer series paper packs. So this is at least a sneak peek at four of the papers that would be featured in the 13 that you would get in the paper share. All right. And so I'm going to set that one aside. So let's talk about today's cards. Now, the idea behind today's cards, which are these cards here, and I've already pre-cut and um, scored everything, so we're just going to put our cards together pretty quickly. But what I do want to talk about is the core colors. So um, right here, for example, this card base is Lost Lagoon. This card base here, this is actually Lemon Lime Twist, and you can see we have the accent colors that are going here. This is a brand new color called, um, this is a returning color, by the way. Um, Lost Lagoon and Lemon Lime Twist are returning colors. And then Lemon Lolly is brand new. Okay, so this is Lemon Lolly. I've heard some people referring to it as Post-it Yellow. Um, and that might be true. But the last thing that I think of when I see that is a Post-it. I think it's very bright and cheerful. So this is Bubble Bath. This is another brand new color. All right. And then this one is called Berry Burst. This is a returning color. This is gorgeous. Um, Joan is saying that she loves the daisy and she has <laughs> every daisy set stamping up his soul. That's so cool, Joan. I think daisies are so sweet. I, I don't know. They're they're such a happy. It's it's a it's a happy theme to work with. But I happen to love florals, too. You know, so I think that's part of it. OK. So let me tell you what I did with this paper pack. So when the new catalog comes out, Stampin' Up! is going to be selling something that they call a core color paper pack. So this is a core color cardstock 
sampler pack. It means that there are two cardstock sheets of each new color that's coming into the color collections. So if you're somebody who likes to sit down and do a lot of easy cards, right? You want to do a lot of cards relatively quickly. I'll give you an idea as to what you can do with this, particularly if you're going to be participating in a paper share, right? Because we all have our favorite papers that we like to use. And this, whether you're using your old DSP that you've collected over time, or whether you're using brand one, new, brand new DSP like I'm using, this is a great idea for this. So I took one sheet of the new colors. So there's two of each color. I took one color of each color and I cut it in half to make two card bases. Okay. And so that is going to give me 22 cards. All right. So I have 22 card bases just from cutting up the 11 new colors of cardstock. And I'm going to take my coordinating designer series papers and I'm going to make some simple cards with these right now for the colors that we're doing here, we're going to be working with these five colors we just talked about, but what a great idea this is. So if you wanted to buy a full pack of the core colors, okay, the core color sampler pack where you get two sheets of each of the 11 new shades, this does not include in colors. This is just color refresh colors then you could actually, if you wanted to cut up every single piece, you could get 44 card bases out of it. But for the sake of this live and giving you guys some ideas for your designer series paper, I chose one to cut up into two card bases each. And then I saved one piece so that I could do accent pieces like die cuts, you know, embellishments, layers, uh, things like that. So for example, when I was getting ready for the live and I was cutting these pieces in advance, I had a leftover piece of cardstock in the same shade that I could cut up some stars and so that I could cut up a background for my dies. So that's the whole concept here. Okay. So that's what we are looking at. So again, these are the five colors we're going to be working with here. Lost Lagoon, Lemon Lime Twist. Oh, I just got lipstick on my hand. Lemon Lime Twist. Lemon Lolly, um, Bubble Bath, and Berry Burst. But here are those other core colors that I want to just walk through really quickly with you. And I'll be working with these in the next couple of days. We have Azure Afternoon. We have Pecan Pie or Pecan Pie, just depending on how you say that. I just watched a Hallmark movie uh, with a pecan farm. It was cute. Um, Misty Moonlight. This is a returning color. Everybody's happy to have that color back, I think. Blueberry Bushel, this is also a returning color. Pretty Peacock. And then our Fresh Freesia, which managed to work its way into our color collections and isn't disappearing as an in color. So yay to that. Okay, so between these shades here and the five that I have here, those are our core colors. Hopefully I didn't miss any. If I did, just shout them out. But I, I think I got them all. Now let's go ahead and get our card kits for today's cards. Okay, so let me just grab these. All right, so what we're going to do, what my plan is here is to try to assemble these relatively quickly. Um, and then, you know, you guys use whatever papers that you have on hand, or this will give you an idea for the upcoming paper share. Uh, if you do want to participate and you want really simple, easy cards that you could put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling out pieces. And we're going to do our gluing first, and then we're going to do our stamping second. So I'm going to kind of tuck my embellishments that are going here, up here. And I'll show you the bundle that I'm using for today's cards, by the way. So I'll do that in just a second, too. All right. So just want to try to keep these in a place where I can find them. All right. And I am going to get my bone folder. We're going to just do some of the basic parts of this first. Okay. So, and I, I can always leave my little embellishments in my baggie too, until I'm ready to use them. But I'm going to stand up now because I have learned I cannot craft straight when I am sitting. It's something I think you have to teach yourself as a technique over time. And don't worry, I'm always breaking and dropping things off camera. That's just kind of my groove. So you're going to take your designer series papers 
I tried to cut most of the pieces um, two and five eighths by four, but not all of the pieces could be cut at that size. <coughs> Excuse me, just for the way that I happened to cut them up. So <clears throat> taking it back to basics today, doing really simple layouts and measurements, but there are different fun ways to use this. So you could use either side. I'm going to go for the Lost Lagoon side, and we're going to put that on the lower half. It's, it's so hard to cover up the cute patterns, but it'll be worth it. Okay. And then we're just going to pop this down here. I'll tell you, um, some of the hardest cards for me to do are the easier ones, like the, the quick layouts, because I am so used to being able to do... Um, you know, multiple, uh, you know, dyes, layers, and, and, you know, making the cards complicated and that type of thing. So sometimes you just need a bunch of cards quickly, whether you're creating a set of cards for somebody else, um, or whether this is just to have on hand throughout the year. A paper share is a perfect time to sit down and pump out a bunch of cards. Now, this is a piece that was a little bit short. This piece is, I think, just about two inches where I didn't have it, you know, meeting um, edge to edge. So all I did was I grabbed a piece of extra DSP, little scraps that I have, and I'm just going to pop that right in the center. All right. So if you don't have the perfect size, you can just match this. All right. It's funny that I started with the one that I didn't have the right measurement for, but I think I did do this a couple of times. Um, now I had like a certain layout that I wanted to do for each card. So I have a piece of the basic white um, right here. And I did this for all of my cards. That's just because I wanted a sort of a uniform theme. So even though it's not 100% the same because my measurements are a little bit different on a couple of these cards, it's going to be really close. So I'm doing a lot of coordinating color. That's something that I personally like to do with my cards. Now, for the stamping part, because we're going to be using, like, essentially the same ink um, for three of the five, and then we're going to heat emboss two, I'm going to do that all at the same time. So I'm just going to leave this off to the side for now, and we're just going to get our bases set up first. So let me, I'm just going to pop this right on here so I can keep, just so that you guys can get an idea for the colors. I like to do this for myself sometimes, too. I usually chart it out, but when I'm working with a sampler pack and I don't have a lot of it, I'm really careful about what I use. Okay, so here is Berry Burst. Here are the pieces we're going to be using here. I don't think I need this one, but I'm going to set it over here just in case. Sometimes I like to just have the extras. Okay, and um, I think my neighbor is, what do they call that? Um, with the water power washing. I think he's power washing. So if you guys hear like a low rumble, that's, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Okay. So Berry Burst is so bright and beautiful. It is an absolutely gorgeous color. And I, um, Joan is saying, I like simple cards. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's so funny that it's so complicated for me to do that. Um, I'm not sure why it's easier for me to do the fancy cards than it is to do the easy cards, but it is really nice at certain times to go back to basics and to just do these really basic layouts. So you can see we have a really cute pattern right here. Here's what the other side of the DSP looks like. You could do whatever patterns you're most comfortable with. This is a perfect example of me cutting um, slightly different sizes again, as opposed to doing the exact match piece. Um, and like I said, I did do this with a couple of these, just depending on how much paper I had left or if I made a mistake. So if you're somebody who cuts it two and three eighths instead of two and five eighths often, well, we can be friends because I do it all the time. I'm going to make this the lower piece. I kind of like these gradient pieces as the lower piece. So let's go ahead and glue this one on. So we're just going to keep these card bases going. Um, but typically the measurement, if you want those equal pieces is two and five eighths by four and you cut up whatever combinations you like. Um, I cut some pieces at two and three eighths by accident. I cut some pieces at like two inches just because I didn't have a lot of paper left to work with in a particular pattern that I wanted to use. 
So you can just mix and match um, to the best, you know, of what works for you or what your preferences are. And even if we have this little gap here in the middle, like we do because I cut this size wrong, um, that's okay because we're going to use this little middle piece here to cover that. So I do like having that third piece. Now you could do ribbon here. Um, you could do a different coordinating color here. I just wanted to keep the layouts really easy. I have a ton of this size, the half inch by four inch piece of basic white. I have a, a ton of these left over because I cut a lot of inserts for cards. And then I end up with this little piece. So I like to just find ways to work my way back, um, you know, work these into our cards sometimes. So if I know I have lots of it, I know that I can use that. Now here is Lemon Lime Twist. This color is beloved, you guys. I honestly have never worked with it prior to now. This is like the first that I'm seeing it. And it reminds me a lot of Parakeet Party, but it is different. Um, I should have brought a piece over so that we could have compared it. But so many of you could not wait for this color to come back. So that's always exciting. So we're going to do Lemon Lime Twist here. We're going to put our two little embellishments up there. Just tuck this back here till we get this little piece on. But this is a very therapeutic way to make a set of cards um, to kind of, if you're doing, um, a lot of people like to do random acts of kindness. So if you're doing like, um, you're donating packs of cards or you're gifting packs of cards, uh, paper shares are perfect for that. Especially if you're like, oh, I just want to try something new or I'm bored or I want to do something a little bit different. Paper share. That is going to be the answer. Okay. And then I'll go over my card base here too. Four and a quarter by 11 score at five and a half. I love this pattern too. This one was hard to cover, um, but we're going to focus on the lemon lime twist side. Okay. <clears throat> and if you like to do pattern on pattern, you could do that. I tend to go with something that's a little more, um, monotone or a little bit softer with something that's a little more bold. I just kind of like that combination. It appeals to my eyes. So just in the way that Stampin' Up! like prints their designer series paper where they have a pattern on one side and then more of like a neutral overall layering piece on the other. That's, I really like that combo personally. Okay. So there we have that one. And I'll just bring this back around just so that we can kind of keep our colors in line here so that we know. All right. And then our next color is my favorite. This is I. This is my new favorite. This is Bubble Bath. Um, I am a girl who really likes pink, so no apologies for that. Um, I do love purples. I love blues. I love different colors. But I was really excited to see Bubble Bath. I think a lot of people were. So let's go ahead and get this one burnished. And then we'll get our pieces. This was one of my favorite patterns from this pack is the stars. I love the combination of the colors and the sizes of the stars. I think that that is so cute and whimsical. So we're going to pop this up here. Okay. And then, like I said, we'll do um, very minor decorating on these. Now, let's say you're doing really basic card layouts like this and you set them aside so that you could actually decorate them later. Maybe you didn't order the bright and beautiful, you know, suite, or you didn't get the coordinating bundle, but you're going to get it eventually. So you could create a lot of card bases, set them aside. And then when you do get the dies or you do get those punches that you really like, um, you can decorate up these layers if you want to. But I'm going to deliberately make this about the paper. So in this case, with these cards, we are really just showing off that paper. And this is for people um, who either like really simple stamping or are brand new to stamping or just don't like to get into the more complicated things. Like I happen to really love two-step stamping, but that's not for everyone, right? That's not something that everybody likes to do. So if you don't like to do two-step stamping, you can consider, look at this pattern, how cute this is too. Um, you can consider doing cards like this because the layouts are so simple. These remind me so much of paper pumpkin cards we all know how much we love paper pumpkin which by the way what day is this um we're coming up on the end of the month so we have until may 10th to subscribe to the may paper pumpkin kit but let me shout that out now because i do feel like it's going to get a little bit lost with the catalog launch um there are add-ons add-on cards that are coming out the day of the catalog launch so i'm excited about that 
we'll definitely be talking about that. All right, and then we'll just put our little piece down here. I love bubble bath. Oh my gosh, I love this color. Okay, so we have this base here. I felt like I made that one a little bit crooked. Okay, so there we have that. All right, and then here is Lemon Lolly. I think Lemon Lolly is so cheerful, and I, I don't know. This is definitely, I should have grabbed Sosa. So Saffron is retiring. Um, but I should have grabbed that color so we could have compared the two. This one just seems like a cheerful, softer, brighter, prettier yellow. I really like this one. I'm really happy with Lemon Lolly. And I think it's the most fun name to say um, of all of the new colors. Love, love, love this pattern. Oh, my gosh. And then this is just the back side of this one. Um, so if you are using a six by six sheet, if you cut it to four inches first, you can easily cut two, two and five eighth inch pieces if you want to use the reverse side, like just like we're doing here. So that's something that you can keep in mind when you're cutting up your um, your sampler packs as well. Okay, and then let me just put this piece right over here. Um, and let's see what everybody is saying. Kathy says, I really like Lemon Lime Twist. So happy they brought it back. And uh, Kathy says, that's Mr. Bubbles Pink. That is hilarious, Kathy. I did not even realize that it was Mr. Bubbles Pink. That is so funny. Oh, my gosh. It, isn't it funny, like, what the colors are reminding us of, especially as we're starting to use them and play with them? I had such a heavy focus on the in colors when, you know, when I got my new stuff, when I got my first pre-order, I was just all about those daisies. I just, I had to use the daisies. I had to use the new in colors. It's just kind of like my thing anytime we have a new annual catalog coming out. But now that I've gotten a chance to kind of, you know, work with these colors a little bit, oh my gosh, they're so much fun. I'm so happy about the changes with the subtles. I don't know how you guys are feeling about that. We have different color collections by name. So we have the subtles collection. We have the Brights collection, we have the Regals, and we have the Neutrals. And the Regals, I think, is the one that was the least affected. And the Subtles were the ones that were the most effective. I think we're switching out four colors in the Subtles. Is that right? So um, I love the colors that they're bringing in for the Subtles. I mean, Lemon Lolly and um, Bubble Bath in particular. Okay, so now that we have all of our bases, and this is two patterns here, but I thought this one was a little on the subtle side, so I was okay with that. So here we go. Lemon Lolly, Bubble Bath, Lemon Lime Twist, Berry Burst, and Lost Lagoon. So for three of the five of these, I am actually going to use the same ink color, um, just again to keep it easy, right? So we're using the same die for all five cards. We're using the same stamp for all five cards. I'm just going to change out the ink on a couple of them. So I'm just using one bundle and that is a great way if you're just getting started or you're just starting to build your, you know, Stampin' Up! product collection. Um, I'm using Charming Sentiments. So I think that a set like this, a bundle like this is perfect when you're sitting down to play with a paper share pack, right? Um, this is a great way because we have all of these different things that we can talk about. But when I looked at Bright and Beautiful, I specifically wanted birthday. I didn't want to overcomplicate it. I didn't want to get involved in too many dies. So I really kept it simple. And you could choose whatever you want, right? But I would do set by set by set of this. Maybe I would use thank you for the next one. Maybe I would switch out too. But I think this is perfect. So we're going to be using this bundle um, today. And then my color, we're going to do Pretty Peacock for the ink color. And then we're going to do um, the white heat emboss from our basics for the two that are like darker in tone. I probably could get away with using a dark ink on them, but I'm going to just, we're going to just switch it out. So we're going to do these first and I might have to get a little bit close to line these up. And if you guys are wondering why these are sticking to me, it's because I have glue all over my hands. All right. And so here is my stamp. So again, um, I am focusing on just one stamp and one coordinating die for this, and that's the happiest of birthdays. So let me clean this off really quickly because I was just using it. And then we'll do pretty peacock for the first three colors. All right. Okay. 
And so this is a tight lineup, okay? Um, but this is essentially what a card kit would look like from me. Now, these aren't the specific cards that are going to be part of my paper share. I'll probably do um, two simple ones and two like more fun fold ones. But um, this will give you a really good idea as to what I mean by having pieces pre-cut um, in your card kit. So let me just pull that down. Okay, so there's the first one. And then we're just going to do that a couple more times. I'm going to be using mini dimensionals today um, just because of the size of the die cuts that we are working with. And I'm just going to line this up and stamp. Okay, and then one more. I just figured it would be easier, even though it's on color cardstock, it would just be easier to just use one ink color, you know. Uh, I think this makes it really a lot more manageable if you need to get a lot of cards out in one session or you just really, really want to play with those new papers. Okay, so like I think that this color would be fine on Berry Burst, but I am going to switch it out and we are going to do just a little bit of, um, I'm going to set this one aside, uh, heat embossing. Now, funny enough, I have a, a place where I specifically set my tweezers and they are not there. So I'm just going to live without it. We're just going to go without. I am going to use my little tray. We at least have that. So I'm just going to clean off this stamp really quick. This is a much simpler, um, much simpler way to heat and boss. Not, not a ton involved here, right? So let me get out my Versamark ink. So what we're going to use is our Versamark. I'm using the Embossing Editions Toolkit, which has a tray, a brush, a little um, anti-static tool here that has some powder in it. And then there's also a set of tweezers, which I don't have to show you at the moment. So I apologize. The white comes in our basics embossing set, which is white, black, and clear. And then we also have a metallics version. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run our little anti-static tool. And I don't have scrap paper down, so I apologize about that. I'm so sorry that this is like sticking to my hands. I know how annoying that is. I'm going to put a little bit of the powder on my fingers and maybe it will stop sticking. All right. And then I'm just going to powder these up. And I'm still like still touching that corner there. So let me see if I can fix that. And then we're just going to get our Versamark ink and do the same exact stamping. Nice and easy. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys like doing sets of cards. And you would think it would be easier because it's all clear and you can see it. But honest to goodness. I think I like it better when the ink is on there. Okay. So there's the first one. I'm going to try to stay away from that. I did kind of stamp that a little wonky, so I apologize. Let me see if I can do better with this one. That one's much better. Okay. Now I am going to heat emboss them both, but I might have to fix it. Let me see if I can flip it and do it. It's really not terrible, but I'm going to try to flip it and do it if you guys don't mind. Okay. And then I'm just going to pop this one into the tray because I don't want to make that one any worse. One more time with my lineup. Let's see how we do. Oh, you know what? When I flip it over, it's, it's in reverse, so I can't do that. Well, you know what? We'll just redo that one later. I could just, if you guys want to hang around, I can die cut that again, or we could just leave it. So ultimately I will fix it. So let's go ahead and do this one and we will get our <clears throat> powder down. Now this is where you would use your tweezers, everybody. Don't be like me. All right. And then I'm just going to tap that off. Dropping it is another way of tapping it. Okay. 
I'm pretty happy with that one. I think that looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and heat set this one. I'm just going to set this off to the side. And then I'm just going to hold it on one end to do the first round of heat emboss and then flip it to the other end to do the other. It's always magical. Always magical to see that changing. It never, ever, ever gets old. If you haven't tried heat embossing yet, I highly recommend it. This is actually my first time using Charming Sentiments too, and we've actually had this bundle around for a year. Um, I, I believe it's carrying over. This is a very useful bundle. All right, and so now we can start decorating up our cards. I'm gonna set Berry Burst off to the side since that's the one that I went a little bit wonky with. Um, and then I will go back to comments. So let me grab my, I have a little extra piece of Berry Burst right here. So I might redo it if you wanna hang out. Um, another thing that I did not mention that's really beneficial with this particular style of card making is that if you only have the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. This is a perfect project, perfect set of cards that you can make if you're just starting out with that mini machine. So many of you who joined um, when we had that offer to get that boho blue mini or the white mini, um, you started with your embossing machine that way and maybe you don't have the big guy yet or maybe you, you know, travel or you have the big machine in one craft room and your mini machine maybe at like a um, like, a, uh, I don't want to say a B and B like your summer home, basically that type of a thing. Um, then that way you could definitely craft in more than one space, but for, especially for those who were like into the basics or were just getting started, um, this is a great place to start. So you would start with your regular ink. And then as you're stepping up your crafting, then that's when you start getting into heat embossing, right? Okay. So with this little one, I just kind of nest it back inside. Um, and this is a great one for the adhesive sheets, by the way. I'm going to just try to fit this in and pop this around. This might not be the, the right way for the star to sit, but I'm just, for the sake of the light, I'm just going to pop it in there and pop it on. I could always fix it later. Okay. All right, so we have that one. And let's do our lemon lime twist next. And then I'll take these little post-its off at the end. You guys are probably like, get those post-its off of that pretty paper. And I don't disagree with you. So we'll do that in just a minute. So I pretty much stuck to um, hearts and stars, but there's like this little shooting star um, thing. And I thought, I'm just gonna make that like a little individual embellishment. But if you wanna do the shooting star with the die cutting, I think that was the actual intention with these. I'm just going to put a little pop of glue on here and do one that's going upward and one that's going downward. So I'll do one that's kind of going up and then we'll do another one that's kind of going down. They're cute. Um, use whatever embellishments you like. This would be a great set to incorporate your twine. It's like, the, is that glue or is that part of the design? It's part of the design. Okay, so that's that one. Let's go ahead and take these off. I think we're all clear on those new colors now. And then let's do bubble bath. Had to do hearts with bubble bath, of course. Very predictable. Okay. 
I love this color. I am going to be making so many cards in this color. Okay. And then here we have our little hearts. And the funny thing is, is the pattern on this one is stars. So I probably should have just cut out stars, but I, I'm cheesy like that when I wanted pink hearts. So yeah, <laughs> I adjust, adjust as needed and do the stars instead. Same thing. I'm just trying to get the backing on this onto both pieces and layer it back together. But you could do them in separate pieces if you want to just glue it straight to the card. Okay, so there's Bubble Bath. And then let's do Lemon Molly. Part of me is wondering if I should stamp the pretty peacock on there and just see what it looks like. I'm te I am tempted to do it. Okay. So let's do, I'm going to pop it right here. And then this one was stars. And then we're going to take this little star and we're going to pop it right inside the big guy. And that one fit nicely. So that must be the way that it's supposed to pop in there. As opposed to Lost Lagoon Star, which was giving me a hard time. Okay, nice and easy. Just try to keep them together and that way you won't have to fuss with it. Okay, so here are four of the cards. And if you want to hang around with me for a minute, I'm going to try to salvage this one um instead of heat embossing it just to make it a little bit quicker i am going to try to stamp it but because this is so tight of a fit i actually like to die cut it first you guys can let me know your opinion on that um it's a really snug fit so let's let's do it this way and if we just hate the way that it looks i can just redo it properly later but let's let's try this so this is my little mini machine right here and we're just going to run this die through. So I just left the one die and the little um, decorative dies out that I was going to use throughout this process. Okay. All right. There we go. Set that aside. We can use that later. And let's try this with pretty peacock. If we don't like it, we don't like it. I'm just curious. That's my Simply Chamois, by the way, for anybody who is new, especially if you're just getting, I'm so sorry if I bumped the camera, um, especially if you're just getting into stamping and you don't have any cleaning tools yet, start with the chamois. So easy and quick. My pretty peacock is a hot mess. Um, it's because it's the old one. All right. Let's see if I can get that line up going. And I was a little bit off there, but you can still see it. So we're going to go with it. We're going to roll with it. What do you guys think of Pretty Peacock on Berry Burst? I'm okay with it. I think it actually looks pretty good. Okay. And let me just grab my little mini dimensionals one more time. And we'll finish this up. I must have known that I was going to make a mistake because I had this little extra piece of designer series paper in this card pack. All right. And then let's go ahead and add these little two. Now I would take, if I was adding embellishments to this, 
I would pretty much use either pearls or rhinestones or something that I could use a whole pack of the same color on everything. Um, or you could buy a coordinating color pack if you would want to. I'm trying so hard to ignore the power washing and it is driving me crazy. Okay. I know that this is the time of year for that. Everybody just starting to spring clean. Are you spring cleaning? I'm behind on spring cleaning. I will easily admit. Now I will say that on this card, I would want the white. I just think that the white would pop a little bit more on this than the darker color, but I think that that shade on that color is fine um, because it really ties more in with the theme, I think. All right, so here are our five cards. I'm just gonna line these back up and then let me get the originals out. So we basically have a really nice set of 10 cards here. And then the one other idea that I wanted to give you, which I haven't actually made one off camera, um, if you don't mind, let me grab one more thing and let's take a look at something. I just want to test this out for myself and see. Hold on one sec. Okay, sorry, you guys, I keep my envelopes in a bin across the room. So one really nice way that you could tie this all in together is you could do a strip of the DSP down at the bottom or on the inside, like with your inside layer. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to try, I'm not sure if it will fit or not. I think it would have to be a little bit bigger than this. Yeah, I think it would have to be a little bit bigger because I was cutting off this piece like I consistently have these two inch pieces because I was cutting so many pieces into four but this is a little bit bigger now that said I could do two different ones so I could just in the same way that I did two tone here I could do two tone here so if I glued this piece and then cut a second little strip here I could have that two tone look but um, I think you would be better off with like a two and a half inch piece if you were going to um, cut this out and glue this on. So I don't know if I should try it or not. I'm, I'm tempted to do it, um, but we can leave it here. Let me check comments and see what you guys think, if you have any opinions on that. Um, I kind of want to try it, but I haven't tried it yet. So again, this is one of those ways to maximize that designer series paper. Um, so here's what Kathy is saying. She's saying, I'm still sad about Mango Melody. Me too. Me too, Kathy. We need more oranges, Kathy. What are we going to do? I'm really starting to like the new colors. I'm just waiting for my second pre-order from free shipping day to arrive so I can see the new core colors in person. Yeah, it makes such a difference. Um, hopefully you'll get that soon. I just ordered a bunch of Moody Mauve colors because that's going to be my first in color club. I'm waiting for that. Um, hi, Roberta. How are you? She said that she used this DSP today too. I know that's, oh my gosh, this paper is so usable and useful and awesome. I think everybody's going to be using it when the catalog actually launches. Um, she said these cards are adorable. Thank you guys so much. And Roberta says, I think you should try it. And Joan says, try it. It's only paper. All right, let's try it. Good. Everybody's game today. So I'm going to set these up here and... Let's do, um, I would like the pattern to be the bigger piece here. So let's see what we have in terms of leftover pieces. I'm going to try to do, and you could do a regular color too, but this is fine, right? Like this one is good. So what if we cut this, you could probably either do a quarter inch or a half inch on this one. Let me grab my paper trimmer real quick. It's right here. Okay, so let's do a half inch piece. I'm 
So we could cut a bunch of little half inch pieces here if we were doing a card set, right? And then we're just going to glue both of these pieces on and then we'll trim around it and let's see how it looks as a back flap to coordinate with our envelope. So I'm going to get my glue and I'm going to focus more on the inner part with my glue. We can go more to the edges as we need to. And I'm just going to line it right up with that line. So let's do that first. Just make sure your edges are coming off evenly. So this is the full six inch in length, a half inch by six inches. All right. So there's that. And then I am going to kind of glue a little bit closer to the edge here. This would be a good one for the adhesive sheets, actually. All right, so I'm just going to give that a second. When you're using multi-purpose, you just got to give it a give it a pinch and give it a second to set. I really don't want to be too messy with glue here so that I don't completely mess up my scissors. Okay, so there's that piece. And now let's do this piece. All right, so we're just going to put this right up against that. I'm going to try to keep that as even as possible. So just trying to get that line up there and then edge that. And you guys can give me honest opinions, honest opinions as to whether you would do this or not. But if you're trying to use up these little pieces of paper, it's worth a shot. Okay. And see, I got a little, got a little glue there. All right. And so I'm just going to trim this out. I don't normally do this, but then I could always just get a little bit closer around those edges if I need to with the glue. And I'm literally just following the envelope. I'm going to try to keep that as clean as possible. Trying to keep my scissors straight so that I don't cut in, but you never know with me. I'm really good at doing that. And then we're just going to round this little edge right here. Let's just get rid of these two little pieces because we're certainly not going to use that for anything. And let's take a look and see. All right. And so we basically would have a coordinating envelope for our card. Isn't that cute? I think it's cute. Anyway, um, I do have to glue these edges a little bit more. This top, this top piece is fine, but just right over here on the edges. But I think that that's adorable. So that's a good way to kind of use up some of those scrap pieces if you would want to. Um, <clears throat> and she says, I am good. I love this paper. Um, Roberta says she loves the flap, but could you also do a card with a two inch strip down the side? Oh yeah. So let me just, let's pretend this is a card front. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you would want to do them this way, you could do them this way too. So if you want to just sort of split it on a card now, of course, I wouldn't put these patterns together, um, but uh, whatever, you know, pattern you would want to do, or if you would want a little bit of a smaller strip this side, but you could use them that way too. So that is a great point. And then if you have a lot of pieces that are like this and you want to do blocks and, and bits and pieces this way, I know a lot of people do layouts like that too, right? So definitely different fun ways that you can end up using your pieces. Um, and then Roberta says all four we can pre-order. <laughs> I know it, it is. There's four, four designer series papers that you can order and the in color, the new in color DSP, I think. And I did not get the in color DSP my first round because I always forget to order certain things. I, I do it every year, you know, where we either forget to order catalogs or, you know, something. But yeah, so all right, this is bright and beautiful. Let me just come back out to 
all of you. I don't want to touch I, that pretty peacock has to be like, I have to really clean that. Um, so that I'm not getting that everywhere. But yeah, so these are all of our cards and our little coordinating envelope. Um, you could use a strip on the inside. Yes, you could absolutely use a little strip on the inside too. I think that that is a great idea. All right, so let me just bring it back. Okay, so thank you guys so much for spending some time. You guys can see my table. You can see all my little scraps on the table right there. Um, let me see if I can move that light. It's really... It's hard for me to light both the table and me. So I apologize about this little dark area here. Um, but yeah, so that is all for today. I'm just going to see if I can. I don't know if it's still open. No, I don't think it is. So we'll just leave it at that. I won't take the time to bring it back up again. But if you are interested in my paper share, it will be in the beginning of the video. I will be posting the full replay um, on YouTube. I've been doing that um, more recently until I can multi-stream. Um, but like I said, paper share, um, the registration will open tomorrow. I will get more information posted up on my blog tomorrow. So if you want to um, go to my blog, I'll have the information there tomorrow as well. Um, registration will be open for the paper share um, April 26th through May 1st, closing it out, placing the order on May 2nd. And then of course, um, we'll go we'll go from there in terms of it getting shipped to me and then me packing everything up, designing the class for those of you who are interested in adding on the class. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But if you want to do a paper share only version, you can do that. If you want to do paper share plus class, I will have an option for that. And I will also have an in color club that is opening registration tomorrow too. Um, so uh, yeah, you can either email me, you can direct message me, I would be happy to send you more information. Um, I do have flyers available. The flyers went out with my email today and I'll get more information out with the replay and then all of the official registration and posting and all of that will start tomorrow. So make sure you're on my email list. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate having you here. I hope you like today's easy designer series paper card ideas. If you do get that core sampler card pack, you could get 22 card bases if you just cut out one sheet, two card bases from each color and leave one. Or if you want to cut them all into card bases to do like a mega set with your paper share, you could actually get 44 card bases from that core cardstock sampler pack. And it will coordinate absolutely perfectly with your new paper share. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about the share or any of that, let me know. Otherwise, you have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I'll see you guys again on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. All right. Bye-bye.